For initial management, once you've diagnosed a concussion or even suspect a concussion, which means they have any symptoms or any signs, or if the mechanism of injury was such that you're worried about them, if it looked like a very vicious, violent hit, and even though they claim they don't have any symptoms, if you're concerned enough, they should never return to play in the same game or practice. Remove them from play, inform their parents that you're concerned that they may have had a concussion, and refer them to a qualified healthcare professional. Medical clearance is always required before an athlete can return to play, and they can never return to play on the same day anyway. So you want to ensure that they're followed up, usually that day or the following day, or at least in the few, first few days after their injury. It's also important to realize that concussion symptoms evolve over time. So the severity of the brain injury or the time of return to play can't be determined at the rink after the injury. That's why it's essential to follow up these young athletes in the next few days because they may actually be getting worse over time. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. Do not let an athlete return to play with any symptoms or signs of a concussion. Ask their family members to keep an eye on them. We no longer require concussed athletes to be woken up every hour, but somebody should check on them. And ask them if they're getting worse. If they happen to have progressive symptoms, they may need then to go to the hospital. Again, ensure next day follow-up by a qualified health care provider. As far as follow-up evaluation and recovery, we can't predict when an athlete can return to play because it depends upon how their symptoms evolve. Clearance of the student athlete begins with a six-step process. First of all, if they have any symptoms at any time during this process, they go back to the previous step. They can resume the following day at the appropriate level and only if they have no symptoms the following day can they advance. And these steps include level one, which is complete physical and cognitive rest, which means all concussed athletes, initially after their injury, can't go to school, they can't exercise, they can't play video games, and they can't text message. The injured brain needs to be rested like any other injury. And if they're text messaging or trying to do algebra problems, that's a high metabolic demand on the brain, and it's actually going to make their concussion worse. Likewise, even though they can't return to hockey, they also can't return to weightlifting or other types of exercise or training during level one. If after a period of complete physical and cognitive rest, they're not having any symptoms, they advance to level two, which is light aerobic exercise. They go for a walk, they ride an exercise bike, and if they don't have any symptoms, they can maybe go to school for part of the day with a very light workload. And if that goes well, the following day, they can progress to level three, which would be sports-specific exercise. They still shouldn't do any resistance training like weightlifting, but they could go out on the ice and skate and do some stick handling, but not participate in any kind of drills. They can also gradually increase their time at school. Remember that they cannot advance to the next phase unless they are completely free of symptoms. And there is no timetable on each of these levels. It may be a day, it may be a week, or unfortunately for some athletes, they may have persistent symptoms for even much longer. Level four is non-contact practice. They can return to some light resistance training. They can get on the ice with their teammates and participate in non-contact drills, and they can gradually, again, increase their workload at school. Level five is full contact practice, where they're back in contact drills and scrimmages with their teammates. They're back in school without limitations. And if they get through level five without any symptoms, we would then allow them to go to level six, which is return to unrestricted competition and school activities. They can then return to playing in games. There's no timetable for return to play. So when an athlete or a parent with a concussion asks me, when can I or when can my child get back in the game? I tell them it's sometime between a week and never. And that gets their attention 
because we realize that often the recovery is prolonged, especially in our youth athletes, and we don't want to predict when they can return to play because it's dependent upon this graded exertion program and their response to each of these six levels. That completes the video portion of this segment. Now let's move on to either.